G'day, I'm Dr. Kate from Bush Blitz and today I'm talking to Dr. Kevin Bonham about how to find and photograph slugs and snails. Over to you, Kevin. Hi, I'm Dr. Kevin Bonham. I'm an expert on land snails, which includes slugs. And I'm going to talk about how to look for snails and slugs in the backyard. Uh, when I'm looking in the field for snails and slugs, I'm usually turning over rocks, turning over logs, uh, sifting through leaf litter, sometimes uh, looking on uh, tree trunks under moss and lichen growing on tree trunks, in bark around the base of trees, all kinds of different places. Sometimes I'll also uh, take home a small bag of leaf litter and, uh, and sort through it looking for little snails under the microscope. In the uh, garden it's uh, very similar, you're basically turning over things to uh, look for where snails are hiding. Works especially well uh, after it's rained recently. Uh, but any time you should be able to find some dead shells if there are some about. So turning over rocks, I wear gloves partly to stop too much dirt from getting on my hands but also to stop things from biting me. Um, turn the rock towards you so if there's anything nasty under it it will run out the other way. Not likely to be a problem in most gardens but depends where you live. Sometimes other places like sometimes looking under vegetation around where there's some um, plants growing over a path. Sometimes there'll be snails hiding under there. And things like uh, plant pots are, uh, are often good. You'll often find snails hiding under uh, old plant pots, under bricks, sometimes under bits of rubbish around the yard and so on, anywhere where the, that can give the snail shelter, it might be there. Now a few tips on photographing snails especially. Firstly, it helps if you can take photos of the snail from three views. So if you've got a, especially if you've got a sort of a flattish sort of snail. So this is a snail from Cuba. Hopefully nobody will be finding this one here. Uh, so one photo from top, looking down. One photo from side on, looking into the opening of the shell. One photo from upside down. It helps if you can get the top of the shell in as good a focus as you can because sometimes there is sculpture on the top of that shell that can be useful for identifying the snail. And another thing that sometimes helps, if you've got a ruler handy, get a measurement of how wide the shell is. So this one's about 40 millimetres, doesn't have to be precise, just the nearest millimetre or so is fine. And also if you're photographing a slug, Try to get it to uh, go for a bit of a crawl so that it's uh, crawling along and it's got its tentacles out so that um, you can see what colour the tentacles are. That sometimes helps for uh, identifying it. And for a slug it helps if you get shots from a few different angles as well. It helps if you can get sort of one from top down on the slug and one from side on, particularly with the breathing hole in the side facing the camera if you can. Also, if you can get one uh, showing the, uh, the tail end in fairly clear focus, that sometimes helps too. Um, don't worry if you can't get lots of photos. Uh, quite a lot of the time, a snail or a slug is identifiable uh, only from one photo, but there are just some cases where it does help to have more. For putting specimens up on iNaturalist, if you don't know what they are, just identify them as gastropods and someone will come along pretty soon and at least identify them to family probably if it's clear from the photo. Wow, brilliant. Thanks so much for that Kevin. Righto, let's go out there. I've got my gloves and I've got my ruler and I'm out at the local nature reserve. Let's go um, have a forage around and see if we can find any slugs or snails. Wicked, we got one. I got a nice little slug here. So we'll do what Kevin said, let him go for a little run. We'll try and take some good photos of him and see if we can get an ID on iNaturalist. So I've just popped him out on this little rock here. I've got my ruler next to him. Let's see if he'll go for, oh yep, he's going for a little run. Perfect. All right, so what do we need? We need the breathing hole from above and from the side. Let's do it.
excitement. I'm so happy that we found a slug. I'm going to take one more photo just to show sort of the habitat that it was in. Now I've taken my photos, I'm going to put him back where I found him. Always make sure you return the logs and rocks to the same place because our little creatures need them. I'll just drop him in the bottom there because I don't want to squash him under the rock. I was so stoked to find that little slug at the end. It took me a little bit of time, but I can't wait to see what you find at home or in your nature reserve. Remember to add your findings to iNaturalist. And if you need any help, check out our website at bushblitz.org.au. Thanks so much.